Hello, I am here with the Baker Creek seed catalog. Already been through it. it has a bunch of little tabs uh, in it. I just spent you know a while going through it and circling things and highlighting and flagging pages. Uh, I am going to quickly go through here and show you kind of what I am looking at. But I will tell you that I already ordered some stuff. So I brought up my container of seeds. Um, they actually released the catalog online um, a few weeks ago, maybe almost a month ago, and as a PDF. And I looked through it uh, and made my list and then actually went ahead and ordered some things uh, because I was worried after the catalog came out that things would be unavailable. And so right now I am waiting on a couple things to come back in stock, but I have pretty much everything else that I originally added to my list already purchased. Now, I did add some more things, I think, to my list when I went through the actual catalog. Today is December 7th, and I got my catalog today, and I already have been through. If you've never ordered um, from Baker Creek, they are a completely, like, organic uh, seed company, and they are based in Missouri. Um, they offer free shipping on their seeds, which is awesome. Most of the seeds are around $3. Some are a little cheaper, and some are a little more expensive, depending on what they are. But um, I have not grown anything from them from seed yet. My partner in crime, Katie, who is my gardening buddy and my best friend, she ordered some stuff from Baker Creek last year and we traded plants. So I did have some things in my garden that were from Baker Creek. Uh, next year, a lot of the stuff in my garden is going to be from Baker Creek. Um, in My Gardener is another one that I ordered some seeds through when they had their spring BOGO offer going. Um, all their seeds are 99 cents. I have only had just a tiny bit of experience with the In My Gardener seeds. It mostly with things that I tried to grow this fall and they froze. Um, <laughs> so that didn't work out very well. But, um... Hopefully next year I will be able to give a better opinion on both of these seed companies. So let's get started through this catalog. The first thing I came in contact with is the beans. Um, I circled two beans on this page, the Contender Buff Valentine beans, which is a bush, and the Purple Potted Pole beans, which are a pole bean. Um, and I have actually already purchased the purple potted pole beans and I also on the next page circled or no they are not in the catalog this year but I also bought some rattlesnake pole beans from Baker Creek to try um, since my pole beans just straight up did not work this year I decided to try two different varieties for 2020 um, because I am determined to have pole beans and here's the purple potted pole beans I also have some bush beans from In My Gardener that I'm going to try for next year. I threw out the seeds I used this year. I hated them, and so I just took the chop to them. Uh, carrots. I circled these little Parisian carrots. Those little babies. They are like little ball-shaped carrots. I thought those were super cool. So I'm hoping these work out. I already have them. They are right here and they are so cute. And I can't wait to grow these this spring because my fall carrots didn't necessarily work out. I don't think, I haven't been out in the garden really to look at everything, but I don't think they made it. Next up is jalapenos, uh, peppers anyway. So I circled a lot on this spread. This is the um, jalapeno and hot pepper area. Um, these two, the lemon spice and the pumpkin spice, I have not ordered yet because one of them is out of stock and the other one was out of stock when I ordered my first round. Um, I also circled the sugar rush peach and the Craig's Grande jalapenos. 
And let's see, I have some. I have Craig's Grande in here. I am going to try new varieties of jalapenos and just kind of see what we get. I'm really interested in these pumpkin spice and lemon spice. There's also one called orange spice, but I just like that it's called pumpkin spice because I am a basic white girl, so obviously I like that. Uh, the Sugar Rush Peach, I circled. I'm very interested in that, but I'm not gonna have the room to do it next year. So that'll have to wait. Uh, the next thing in the catalog that I circled is spinach. And this is the Monstru de Veroflé, Veroflé, I do not know. Uh, it is just a, you know, classic spinach. It says very fast growing plants are popular for fall planting. So I am, actually going to be starting some lettuce in the house, I think, pretty soon. The Rocky Top Lettuce Salad Mix. Just like this here. And this is the one I'm thinking I'm gonna grow just in a flat in the basement. And there you have it. This delicata squash is next, this up here. This is something that I have heard about a lot, delicata squash, and actually I already have it. Um, I had, I bought these seeds and I had never actually tried this before. And then we went to Fresh Time um, and found some and we tried it and it's delicious. So I have the seeds already. I am super excited to try growing it. I have not ever grown squash. I know that's weird. Um, I don't usually have to grow squash. My grandpa grows zucchini, and so that pretty much like keeps everyone that we know um, fed with zucchini. <laughs> so, but I'm going to try to grow it next year. Um, I need to see how big the plant gets because I'm not exactly sure where it's going to go in the garden. Um, we've talked about it a little bit, but the tomato arch in the garden is going to come down and become a flat panel kind of like this situation, um, like a tomato room, if you will, kind of. So I need to figure out where the squash is going to go in the midst of all that room that I'm going to take up and then also clear, kind of. Oh, I didn't even show cucumbers either. I did buy some cucumbers. Um, I bought some of these little muncher cucumbers. And these are Non-bitter, dual-purpose, burpless variety. Harvest at six to eight inches for slicer, smaller for pickles. Robust production. Uh, I might try to pickle some full pickles next year, maybe. Uh, these also get big enough to do slices. And you can also do like spears. So I am thinking that I'm probably just going to do maybe the one cucumber plant next year. Maybe, I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Uh, let's see, next is tomatoes, and this is the first variety that I've already purchased. This is called Aunt Ruby's German Green, and this is one of the largest green beef steaks that can grow over to one pound, over one pound. That, that's awesome. I, I love a big, a big tomato. I already have these. Here they are. And these, I, I'm, I've never grown green tomatoes before. I mean, I have obviously, like so every tomato is a green tomato first. And I have never grown green tomatoes, but these stuck out to me because my um, great grandma's name was Ruby. And uh, so obviously I had to buy these. Um, so I'm excited about these. These are gonna be super cool. Next on the list is Dr. Witchy's or Dr. Weich's, I don't know, and Kellogg's breakfast. Um, I did not buy Dr. Weich's or Dr. Witchy's, whatever, but Katie did, um, I think. Let's see. Uh, we have a spreadsheet with all of our seeds in it. No, she did not. Okay, so we're not doing Dr. Dr. Weich's this year, but I do have Kellogg Breakfast in here. And those came from M.I. Gardner. So I do have Kellogg's Breakfast in here already. I'm super excited about those. These are an orange beef steak. They get huge and I am stoked. 
Another variety of tomato that I have already purchased is the mini bell. So I've already bought this and I, my original plan was to grow this in the house, like over the winter, but I have not done that yet. I have not planted it, but here it is. And here's another thing that I think is interesting about Baker Creek. I got this packet and it says overpacked due to low germination, 68% on October of 2019. I think that's super interesting. They actually grow these seeds themselves. And so they know if it's not germinating the way they want it to. So there are extra seeds in this pack. So that way I can get the germination rate that I want and the number of plants that I want out of this pack of seeds. So this is a determinate plant, meaning it just gets to a height and then it stops. It says tiny ornamental plants are perfect in containers, obviously. It says it's also good for hanging baskets, which I think is super interesting. I've never thought about putting a tomato plant in a hanging basket, obviously, because normally that wouldn't work out very well. They have all these beautiful striped tomatoes in here, cherry tomatoes, white tomatoes, purple tomatoes, black tomatoes, watermelons. Uh, the next thing that I circled is the Emily basil here. This, I've already purchased this. Um, this is just a compact version of the classic, just like Genovese, Genovese basil. Um, where is it? Herbs. Emily basil. I was not impressed by my basil last year and it was this from Real King. I didn't get very big. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I planted them too close together or what, but the leaves were only about, you know, an inch long. It's not very long and they weren't very wide. And so it was hard to use them. And so I just kind of didn't. Um, I made one round of pesto and that was it. I, I didn't do very much. Uh, so I'm hoping that next year I can kind of figure it out and get some basil that has bigger leaves so I can actually use them, which would be nice. I also circled this slow bolt cilantro right here. I have always struggled with cilantro because it, it, is, it gets hot here sometimes really quick. This year it got hot. It went from too cool to plant to really hot and we didn't really get like a good spring. So this is supposed to be a more bolt resistant version of cilantro. It says try planting frequent successions just a few weeks apart to ensure the most fresh and flavorful cilantro. So I might try to do that. I just didn't get a lot from it and it only literally got like this tall and then it just died or it bolts so quick or whatever happens. I also circled a couple flower varieties. I didn't buy any flower varieties yet. I usually just buy flowers on the clearance rack at Lowe's, but I may try to start from, from seed this year. I circled this balcony mix of petunias. I love petunias. And these um, are an heirloom, so um, they tend to bloom longer and are more fragrant. So that's super cool. And then I also circled this candy cane mix of zinnias up here. I think those are so cool. And I don't, I mean, I don't know what kind of flowers I'm gonna do for next year yet. I did plant some Black Eyed Susans in the garden before the frost um, to maybe, I don't know, maybe have those come in. I probably will do some marigolds, but probably not as many as last year or this year. This year was a little over the top with the marigolds. I'd like to do a couple hanging pots or one hanging pot at least like I did this year. Um, so that may be petunias or it may end up being something else. I don't know. Maybe petunias. I like petunias a lot. Something to attract the pollinators and the bees. And that's pretty much um, it for the seed catalog. I have a couple other things that I got for free. When you order from Baker Creek, you always get a free pack of seeds. And this time I got uh, bouquet dill, 
which is just a, a big variety of dill. And I also got, oh, I also bought some teddy bear sunflowers, which look like this. And they get um, up to two feet tall, so they're tiny. I'm thinking I might plant these next to the trellis in the front of the garden. My other free seed was lemon bee balm. So each person that uh, works there, I think, has their face on a seed packet and they pick a seed to include in orders that they pick. I think is how it works. I don't know, but that's from that's what I have understood. I also have these Velvet Queen sunflowers that I tried to grow this year and they got eaten by something. So we're gonna try those again. And those are like a six foot tall sunflower, like the other ones I grew this year as well. So for now, that is the seed status. So I am going to work on my, I'm going to work on getting the rest of the seeds that I want for 2020. And pretty soon we're going to be starting some seeds, which is weird seeing as it's December 7th, but um, I am going to be starting my peppers early. And by early, I mean like while I'm off work between Christmas and New Year's maybe, because they need lots of time to get established. So that way I can hopefully get some freaking peppers next year. Because last year, or this year, was not good at all for peppers. I have a couple other varieties of bell peppers to try. I also have these pepperoncini peppers, which are like banana peppers. Uh, da, 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 da. I have chocolate beauty peppers. And these keystone resistant giant peppers. I'm hoping that these work out and I can get some bell peppers in addition to my hot peppers. I have a pack of Pimento cayenne peppers, seeds that my mom found and gave me. Uh, they are old, but they, they very well may still um, germinate. So we're gonna try these two maybe. I don't know, we'll see. So that's pretty much the seed update. Uh, the Baker Creek catalog is here and things are good. So once I get my garden plan set for 2020, I will be sure to update and once we get all the seeds in we'll you know go through a whole list of everything we're going to grow for 2020 when we're going to start those seeds how long they should take to germinate what season they're going to grow in all of that so until then we will just you know wait for seed time so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one